My name is William Hunt. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. I would like to tell you about my experience with tinnitus. It started in early April of 2009. I had a hearing test and it showed significant hearing loss in the upper range of the frequency scale. But shortly after that test, maybe two or three days, four days later, I started to hear a strange sound. I was unfamiliar with tinnitus. I had never heard the word before. I was not aware of the condition. But it started as a scratchy, static sound, just barely perceptible. Uh, within a short period of time, perhaps a week, a week and a half, it ramped up and became very loud. Loud enough that it sent me to an ear, nose, and throat specialist for consultation. He looked at my audiogram, told me that the, the hearing loss was obvious and not unusual, and diagnosed my condition as tinnitus. Again, the first time I had heard the word. I asked him what it meant. I asked him what I could do about it. He suggested to me that, since it was so early, I should be patient. That over time it may actually reduce and even disappear. Give it some time. And in the meantime, he prescribed an anti-anxiety medication which I started taking. It took effect within a day or two and helped to reduce the volume of the tinnitus to the point where I could live with it and still carry on a somewhat normal life during the day. I gave it time, I tried to be patient, uh, months to, a month or two went by and the biggest problem I had was at night. I was able to go to sleep at night, but it would wake me up. After two or three hours, I would wake up out of a sound sleep. For some reason, the tinnitus would ramp up, and I could not go back to sleep. So it was extremely disturbing not to be able to sleep at night. I would get up, I would walk around for an hour, it would start to quiet down, and I would go back to sleep and only two or three hours later it would ramp up and wake me up again. It was intolerable. I went back to the ear, nose and throat doctor a couple of times but by now it had been about two months and he informed me that there really wasn't much else that he could do. He would continue to refill the prescription for the anti-anxiety medication. He would provide me with sleeping medication, which did help, but left me somewhat groggy the following mornings. But that was about all that he could do. He told me that there was no treatment, there was no cure from a medical standpoint. I was very disheartened and anxious and confused and depressed. I started to research this condition on the internet. I joined a local support group. I spoke to several other people who had suffered from this for years and I did not feel any encouragement. I was at a loss for what to do. On my uh, internet work I came across, by chance, a video testimonial, somewhat similar to this one, where an individual had met with Dr. Shemesh in Israel several years before the video, and that he had been treated by a medical doctor as if it were a medical condition. This surprised me and caught my attention. He also stated that the treatment was successful, that he had actually been cured. 
Fortunately, there was contact information at the end of the video. I anxiously attempted to contact the individual over a period of time. We exchanged emails and eventually talked to each other over the phone. I felt encouragement for the first time in several months. It seemed almost too good to believe. But this individual was very convincing and suggested that I call Dr. Shemish on his cell phone and speak to him myself. That surprised me because we're not accustomed to calling doctors on their cell phones and speaking directly to them in the United States. It is unheard of. There is usually a receptionist or a medical assistant that you can talk to, but not the doctor himself. To my surprise, the first time I called the doctor on his cell phone, he answered. And we spent 35, 40 minutes. He was very patient with me, asked questions about my condition, how long I had had it, and so forth. He also suggested that I wait a little bit longer because it may heal and improve on its own, and that he was going to go to an annual conference on tinnitus, and it was not the best time for me to visit Israel and have his full attention. So I waited a bit longer. It did not improve. Recontacted the doctor and got on his schedule. I arrived the very last day of July 2009 to begin consultation on August 2nd, 2009 in Tel Aviv, Israel. I had never been to Israel before. Everything was new to me. The first thing I would note is that the initial consultation was quite extensive. It lasted several hours and went late into the night. The doctor wanted to know not only about my current condition, but much of my past history. Had I been exposed to loud noises, to chemicals, to toxic agents? Uh, what were my relationships with other family members? How was this condition affecting me emotionally, mentally, physically? It was so late that he agreed to take me back to my apartment. So I was impressed with the patience and diligence of the initial consultation. I had never seen that before with any physician in my lifetime. Um, the next thing I would like to talk about is the style and approach that Dr. Shemesh takes with his patients. In my opinion, it is unique. He believes that it is important to treat each patient individually and create a customized approach. After thousands of patients over many, many years, he believes that each patient requires individual attention and analysis. And he also believes that this kind of condition requires creating a working relationship with a patient. That takes time. It takes a lot of discussions and a lot of feedback. On the part of the patient, I soon came to realize that it requires a sense of commitment and discipline that you have to have when you go into it and that you must retain. Discipline to see the, the doctor on a regular basis, discipline to take the dosage and medications as specified. Uh, there's a routine that you must follow that you cannot deviate from. And uh, again, a dedication on both parties to results. I also came to realize that the doctor's commitment extends even beyond the time that you spend in Israel. My initial intention was to stay here about five or six weeks. 
he told me that he could not predict in advance how long this might take, but I thought that might be an appropriate length of time. I extended it to a full three months. First, because I had the time available, and secondly, because I felt I wanted to give this every possible opportunity to be successful. Today, I am nearing the end of the third month. In a couple of weeks, I am returning back to the States. I can now share with you the results to date. My tinnitus has improved to the point where the sound level is probably somewhere between 70 and 80 percent lower than when I arrived. I have been taking his medications faithfully and I believe it is paying off. I will continue to take medication after I leave for an indefinite period of time. It may be several months. I will continue to communicate with Dr. Shemish by email, by cell phone. I will continue to take follow-up blood tests so that he can monitor indicators and we can continue this treatment uh, until we get the full benefits. It's entirely possible that I may eliminate this entirely. We don't know yet, but that is our objective. The final thing I would like to say is that this experience has been dramatic, traumatic, and meaningful. Uh, I am 64 years of age. I have never had any physical, mental problems before. I have always been in good condition. And this has affected my attitude toward life and toward helping other people. It is my intention to establish a foundation or some sort of nonprofit organization that would have two objectives. One objective is to educate and inform people about the dangers of exposure to noise and the dangers of hearing loss, which I have come to realize is virtually an epidemic in an industrialized state like the United States. We live in a world of extreme noise, whether it's from where we work, from music and concerts, iPods, shotguns and firearms. We are surrounded by extreme noise and we are not aware of its impact. I believe exposure to noise caused my hearing loss. I believe my hearing loss set the stage for my tinnitus. If I can help anyone to prevent that, I am ready to spend whatever time is left in my life doing that. My second objective is to enable people to receive treatment. Medical treatment for a medical condition. And that means helping them come to Israel to see Dr. Shemesh and receive the benefits of his care. I know I've covered a lot of material here. You may have a lot of questions. I'm going to leave my email address with you on this video. Please do not hesitate to contact me. I am more than happy to make myself available to each and every person who does so. Thank you very much.